Welcome to the Train Like a King podcast, dedicated to all things paddling, designed to help paddlers of all levels get motivated to get out on the water. Join host Tapuria King as he shares insights and tips on his past experiences, training, racing, interviews, and much more. Tune in, grab your paddle, and let's train like a king. So let's talk about the early days. How did I get into wakaama or outrigger canoeing and how did I end up where I am now? So I was first introduced to paddling by my father um, along with my three sisters and my mother. Um, We all kind of started at different times but ultimately we all ended up paddling becoming a wakaama family and I started at the age of seven um, seven years old is the first time that I picked up a paddle and, and started paddling and joining my sisters I watched my sister's paddle for a few years prior to that um, with we are from the far north Taitokero um, in a place called Broadwood and we used to train in a place called Pawaringa. Um, my club at the time and my, my club to this day is Nga Hoi Horo, which means fast paddlers or fast paddles. And yeah, we first started training on a tidal harbour. So you had to time it right. Otherwise, you'll be walking the canoes back in knee deep mud. Because when the tide goes out, you know, it just exposes this, all of this mud. So, um, not the easiest place to train, but it was, it was a really um, important part of the development of Ngahoi Horo. Um, You know, a lot of, a lot of top paddlers have come from Ngahoi Horo and it was one of the earliest clubs, especially in the far north. Um, one of the earliest clubs to to start in New Zealand. So um, looking back now, you know, there's so many clubs in New Zealand. And it's awesome to see the growth that's that's occurred. So started paddling in Pauringa, and then later on we moved the club. Part of the club started training um, closer to town in Kaitaia or at a lake called Lake Ngatu. And... You know, in the early days, um, wakaama was just a summer sport for us. You know, in the winter time, I played rugby. Um, even prior to that, we played tennis and all you know all these other different sports. So wakaama, we only kind of started training towards the end of the year, say November, December, maybe. Um, training for our national sprint championships, which ha- which happen in January each year. Whereas the rest of the year, I wouldn't really pick up a paddle. Um, yeah, I would be playing rugby and you know focusing on school and 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 those type of things. So those were the early days. Um, and like I said, I grew up watching my two older sisters paddle first because they were the first ones to paddle out of all of us. And it was really awesome because they kind of set the path for me and my twin sister um, and my mother who started after them. Um, you know, thanks to my father coaching them, they were... They represented um, New Zealand at the World Championships, um, both, you know, world champions in their own right. And, yeah, it was just awesome to see. Um, Even Rose, my one of my older sisters, you know, even represented in Tahiti, um, did her first TI tour in, I want to say, 2009. So that was four years before I even got to TI tour. Um, what else can I say about the early days? Um, 
yeah, went to Kaitaia College, Kaitaia College in the far north, like a small town. Um, Broadwood's even smaller. So we kind of, our, we went from, my mother was the teacher, so we kind of went from teacher house to teacher house to teacher house, probably had four different houses within Kaitaia um, during those, you know, primary school and high school years. Um, I actually started off school um, at Broadwood Area School, and I actually started in an all Māori speaking classroom. So I learned to speak Te Reo Māori at a, at a young age. Um, my class was called Te Puna, and we only spoke Māori, and we looked um, learnt in Māori and, and everything. And then next to us, we had our, at the same school, we had uh, Endeavour, which was the the Pākehā classroom, um, which I think to this day, I think was always an interesting uh, concept for a school to have two classrooms next to each other, same same age kids. One was fully Te Reo Māori immersive and then one was um, English Pakia speaking. So, yeah, that's uh, that was a very, uh, I think, um, Im- important part of my life was being able to learn Te Reo Māori, learn my roots. Um, you know, if my on my mother's side, um, Tainui is my iwi, so that's more of the Waikato region, and then on my father's side, Ngāpuhi is my iwi so the north so a bit of a mix of the north and and the in the Waikato region um so yeah the way that I actually started paddling I was up at Lake Ngatu watching my sister's train and a coach um Ron uh she was one of my earliest coaches and she told me to stand in the water knee deep and gave me a paddle and just told me, you know, take a few strokes. And I did. And that was the the beginning. And Ron, she was a huge, and to this day, a huge part of the success um, at Ngahoi Horo. And she contributed so much to, to us, to the sport, to young paddlers, particularly in those outer regions like Broadwood, Pawaringa, Pangaru, you know, picking kids up, um, you know, every afternoon that they could and driving them hours to to training. Well, that's, that's one of the, that's one of the hardest jobs in Wakama is coaching, you know, that's, it's easier to coach a team that's already good, you know, and with paddlers who are already keen and have the luxury of getting to training and that. But what makes a true coach is finding those 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 paddlers, those kids that are that can't always make it to training easily, and providing them the support to get to training. And that was a you know, big ups to Ron, uh, to Bruce, Kinsey, and the likes. And um, so in the early days, I had a lot of people to look up to, including my parents, um, my older sisters, um, a few influential paddlers at the time, Bo Herbert, Maui Kelson, the Herberts on tour. You know, back then, we we used to say, oh, you know, that's my uncle, even though he might not even be your uncle. <laughs> but that was just a way of saying, you know, I want to be like them when I'm older. Um, so, you know, those those role models really were important and they still are important for the younger paddlers in those far stretched regions that lack the the lack the maybe the equipment the the 
and the support to get out on the water. So shout out to any coach, any member of the community that is aiming to do exactly that, to grow our sport, to provide rangatahi with with opportunities like Waka Ama to, to pr- improve their life. You know, the lessons learned through paddling uh, forever. So um, big ups to you. And that brings me to the conclusion of the first episode. So stay tuned for episode number two, where I dive into my first taste of victory. So starting to move into first overseas trips, first national victories, and so forth. So thank you for listening to the first episode of the Train Like a King podcast, and we'll catch you on the next one. Kia ora.